Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Steam Deck OS running on the all new ASUS ROG Ally. Well, I have to admit, it's not exactly Steam OS 3, and Hollow ISO would not boot on the unit, given that the last updated installer was in December of 2022, so uh, hopefully that's updated soon. But what we've got here is Chimera OS, and this is an operating system that I've been using quite a bit recently. It's a gaming-centric Linux distro based on Arch, and I've done a couple videos on it. This actually works out really well on handhelds and desktop PCs, and this was really the only one that I could get up and running. And I did have to install a bleeding edge build here, so this is just more of an early look at Linux gaming on the ROG Ally. There's a lot of stuff here that works great. There's a few things here that aren't working at all, given that we have newer hardware, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So straight off the bat, audio on the Ally isn't working with this build. I've actually got a USB Type-C hub connected, and that has a 3.5mm audio jack, so I've got that plugged into a smaller speaker. Wi-Fi is working half of the time. Every other time I boot it up, Wi-Fi isn't available, but uh, it is detecting that chip every once in a while, so that's something else that needs to be fixed up in a future build. And the final thing here is TDP control. Since we're working with a Zen 4 APU, and uh, the kernel may not exactly support this specific chip here, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, none of the third-party apps that I usually use to control TDP on these handhelds is working at the moment. So what that means is, it's really just relying on BIOS TDP control, and I believe it's set up to 30 watts, and that's without Windows installed. We don't have Armory Crate that we can use with Linux, but again, this is a bleeding edge build, and this will get much better. In the future, I will be able to test lower wattages, higher wattages, and things like that, but I wanted to give you a look here because uh, it's actually working really well for kind of just a first install. Moving down here to the system information, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen Z1 Extreme, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz, and the MESA driver is 23.0.2. And I've looked at documentation, I don't see any kind of mention about the uh, Z1 Extreme with that MESA driver, so I'm not exactly sure if we're even getting full performance out of the GPU with this, but uh, we can definitely game on it. Bringing up the performance menu here gives us all the goodies that we see on the Steam Deck, except for TDP control. That's the only thing that's not going to work here. But if you wanted to use system-wide FSR, it's working, half-rate shading. We can also lock the frame rate up to 60 or just turn it completely off, and then that's going to give us 120 hertz here because we've got a 1080p 120 hertz display. So I've installed a bunch of games here that I want to test out. We've got some old stuff, we've got some new stuff, some indie games, and uh, let's go ahead and start up Forza Horizon 5 and see how this performs. Okay, so far not bad at all. 1080p, medium settings, we're getting an average of around 88 FPS. Now, like I mentioned, we don't have manual TDP control from the operating system. This is relying on the BIOS. Once we get a new kernel, new MESA driver, and new build, we can definitely test this at lower wattages. But right now, this game is performing absolutely amazingly at medium 1080p in Linux. Okay, so next up we have Horizon Zero Dawn. We're at 1080p low, and I'm at 1080 from the settings, and I've also set it from the main UI. If you go directly into a game, it's only going to be 720p, given we have a 16x9 aspect ratio display. I've changed the default resolution to 1080, but it doesn't look like this game is 1080. From the game settings, we're at 1920 by 1080. Game scope says 1920 by 1080. And I know that I'm using FSR. It's at balance, but you know, I test these games out a lot. This definitely looks like it's running at 720p to me. Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings, we're getting an average of 68 FPS, and of course, dropping this down to 720p is still going to look great on this display, but since we're working with the 1080p display, I wanted to keep everything up there just to see what it would do. Taking a look at an easier to run 2D game, we've got Shredder's Revenge, and as you can see, this is running at 120 FPS. Remember, we've got a 120 Hz display here, so uh, we can go up there, and it does support FreeSync, and I've noticed even with Linux, FreeSync is working. 
Here's Sonic Mania, and I was actually under the impression that we had a setting uh, that we could go up to 120 hertz with this game here, but I'm not seeing it from the settings in the game. Either way, I mean, when it comes to these 2D games or even indie games, they're not going to present an issue for the ROG Ally, even in the state we're in right now. Taking it back a bit to Left 4 Dead 2. We're at 1080p medium settings, locked at 120 FPS. I did turn VSync on just so we could get that locked. It'll actually run it up to around 156 FPS on average at 1080p medium settings. I'm filming this screen at 60 hertz, so it's really not going to do it justice, but this is super smooth. I mean, being a 120 hertz display, it looks really great as long as we can get there. OG Skyrim 1080p, high settings, and in Windows, at high settings, we can run at a constant 120 FPS. As you can see, we're way down here, and it's kind of expected. I mean, we do have better power control over there in Windows right now, so, uh, you know, performance will be a bit better down the road, and I think we'll be able to run this at 120. This is a game I recently tested in Windows on the ROG Ally in dock mode, and we were able to go up to 4K. 1440p ultra settings would run at around 100 and something FPS, which wasn't bad at all given that we're just working with integrated graphics, and right now we're at 1080p high settings. When it comes to Cuphead, not many graphical settings, but as you can see, we are at 120 FPS with this. And like I mentioned, you know, indie games, 2D stuff is going to work great on this device. Project Cars 2, 1080p, medium settings, we're getting an average of 77 FPS, looking really good here. And this is still one of my favorite racing games, at least for the rally cross. And you know, when this game came out, it gave basically every PC a run for its money, even at medium settings. And to see it run on this at medium 1080p, over 60 FPS is really awesome. And of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. Now I do have this one at 720p, and I'm using the Steam Deck preset. I wanted to see how it stacked up against it, and uh, yeah, we're over 60 FPS, and turning that frame lock on will give us a constant and smooth 60 across the board, plus limit power usage. This will do 1080p even in Linux, but we need to go down to low settings. It'll do over 60, around 64 FPS on average, but uh, like I mentioned, I wanted to go with that Steam Deck preset, and this is looking really awesome. Of course, once the community and developers get their hands on the ROG Ally, we're going to see some really great stuff with Linux. One thing I'd love to see is just proper TDP control directly from that performance menu. It's been a long time coming, and uh, I did try power tools. I also tried simple TDP adjustment. Wouldn't work for me, given that we have such a newer chip. There are a few other little tricks that I can try out, but I figured, you know, performance was good enough to make kind of a first look video here. So far, given that it's really early here for Linux on the ROG Ally, I think I'm seeing some pretty decent performance here. Now, testing that lower TDPs is a must, and as soon as I can figure something out here, I will get it implemented. But at the time of making this video, there's no surefire way to really adjust that TDP on the Z1 Extreme. And to tell you the truth, we may have to wait for uh, more developers and community members to get their hands on these so they can start looking into everything. But right now, given what we're working with, I think it's looking really promising here for Linux on the ROG Ally. And another thing I'm really interested to do here with the Ally in Linux is actually disable a few of these cores for some easier to run games. Uh, the Steam Deck does have this beat when it comes to power consumption. The Steam Deck performs much better than the Ally at 10 watts, and basically anything over that, the Ally does come ahead, but you know, if you're looking to get really great battery life, the Steam Deck's where it's at, and you know, disabling some of these cores here actually might help out in those situations. Taking it down to just work as kind of a four core CPU, and even limiting the clock on the CPU and GPU would definitely help out with battery life in the long run. Now that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching, and it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on if you're into videos like this, because I've got more coming. But if you're in the mood for checking out some more Ally videos, I've got a bunch of them over on my channel. 
We've done some eGPU testing, docked or desktop mode, emulation, and more PC gaming. So uh, definitely check those out. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.